I don't understand. This meeting is being recorded. Leave meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't consent to this. <laughs> don't ever do that. <laughs> Wait, did you start the recording? <laughs> Yes, it's recording currently. Turn it off! <laughs> Delete it! No. It's going in. You know, I've seen kids do worse in front of people. Oh, yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, but hootie. Welcome to... That was very uncomfortable. And go for a second. Um, man, this this recording is not going my way. Welcome to do 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 Nick and Griffin's. Do, Why do you do, get top do, 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 do. Did okay. I didn't see you introing the the recording here. So because we don't have one. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're professionals. Do, we do, don't do, 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 Welcome to Nick is Better Than Griffin show, where we talk about, is that a Stanley He-Man action figure you have in your background? No. I don't think so. Weekly story. Today's topic is do 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 uh um, hold on <laughs> give me a minute do 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 roman entertainment yay <laughs> all right so you want me to go first I feel no like you want me to go first all right oh first... so we're doing this backwards now first so you're topic. going to be doing the theater number three is the we start with Roman three. is the Roman theater? This I, I messed it up. <laughs> this <laughs> technical difficulties. Do 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 oh my god no this is this is literally the description of the day that we shot where to go where to go where to go it's like underneath something it's very dark i can't see that oh i could kind of make out where the where it is based off of the room yeah, it's I found like it. under. Yeah. Did it? Did it? Did it? Did it? Wait. My God, this is gonna be an hour long. Welcome, well, welcome to Nick and Griffin's Roman Entertainment Project. Starting with numero three. Num number three is drum roll, please. I didn't ask you to become a Neanderthal, Griffin. I asked for a drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> Give me drum. Uh, I don't know what Good you want enough. me to do. First one okay. is theater. <laughs> Did you know that the first permanent theater in the city of Rome was the theater of Pom Pompey? Pom Pompey. <laughs> Dedicated in 55 BC by Julius Caesar's <laughs> rival, Pompey the Great. <laughs> was he really that great with that kind of a name? No, Pompey. It's not, it sounds like Pompey. Is that where the guards were? Yeah, I know. Or... Like, yeah, it's like we have a Pompey, we have a Pompey. You have like 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 a like a pumpa like I don't know like how many other <laughs> pumpa lumpas? Um, yeah, no, no, no. Griffin loves the oompa loompa song. Sing it to him out loud for a free treat. What is that? What is that? Was that your arm like cushion? <laughs> yeah. 
the many mysteries. Just coming off, so I like, have that you know same what? mini fan. I have the same fan at my mom's house. Do 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 do. Welcome to Griffin and Nick. Roman Theater Entertainment Project. We're not going to be able to use any of this. All right. So, the Roman Theater was the first permanent one, because there were, I guess, yes, ones before. that is correct. The first theater permanent of... one was put in Rome by Pompey the Great, who was Julius Caesar's, like, enemy. In yeah. 55 BC, you said? Yep. Before, Before Christ. Christ. Not after. No, nope, uh, no. Nope. Too late. Now, the theater of which only the foundations are preserved was an enormous structure rising to approximately 45 meters and capable of holding up to 20,000 spectators. How much would you say is 45 feet? Meters. <laughs> yeah, how much is 45 meters? In feet? Uh... Well, that's something yeah. for Google. Welcome to. All right, all right, all right. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. A hundred and forty-seven point <laughs> six three eight feet. So yes, that is a very large uh, structure. Impressive that they could build that back in the day. I mean, modern technology. <laughs> wasn't 55 BC? <laughs> wasn't, well, you didn't let me finish. Modern technology wasn't around back then, so it's very hard for the Romans to build such a, a magnificent structure. But if the Egyptians could do it with the pyramids with their little meh, you know what I'm talking about? Then Romans and could slavery. do it too. Okay. You had to just Debbie down the whole scenario. So for, from what I from what I hear, you know, just word of mouth. Um, supposedly, it could hold up to uh, 20,000 spectators. I mean, I did just say that, Griffin. That is correct. <laughs> okay. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Is that a pumpkin spice latte? Welcome no. to... <laughs> do, 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 no. Do, do, do. <laughs> so... That's the new bit. This is the new bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For real this time. That, that's all I got. Choices. Information on the building itself. It's not a whole Oh, lot. yeah. The rest of, like, there's, like, a lot of people that went there, though, right? Yeah. Famous people went there. <clears throat> okay. uh, I have a whole list, which makes up for the fact that I don't have a lot for the building. So don't <laughs> don't give a low grade on it. I'll cry. Uh, Livius okay. Andronicus was a Greek slave taken to Rome in 20... To, 20, 240, 240 BC, BC <laughs> and he wrote plays based on Greek subjects and existing plays. Rome's first playwright. Now, that is Rome's pretty nifty. Rome's first playwright was a Greek? A Greek slate? That's not surprising considering that the Romans basically just stole everything from the Greeks anyway, so I'm not too surprised. Oh my god. Sorry. Don't want to spill that pumpkin spice latte. Plautus. Plautus? There's a lot of words that are going to be misspelled. Uh, said, third Plotus. century BC yeah. comedic playwright and author of Miles Glo Glorious, 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 like Glorious, Pseudolus, and Menachimi, Chmi, Menachimi, 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 do 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 do. Welcome to <laughs> just start over again. <laughs> okay. No, so we no, got a no, comedian no, no, in the no, house. That's it. Guy no, thinks he's on. a regular Jerry Seinfeld. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, I was actually gonna like comedically like turn off my camera, but I think that would actually break everything, so I'm just gonna not. Let's move on. Terrence. <laughs> Terrence. Terence wrote between 170 and 160 BC. What did he write? <laughs> that's that's a funny. I don't know. If I click on he the nifty link, he wrote. <laughs> oh, did he write? Now, let me, if I click on this nifty difty, nifty difty link, uh, he wrote things. Well, this isn't the assignment, Griffin. So you're throwing me off kilter. So I'm, I'm just going to curious. Continue. Well, maybe you should use Google. Okay. <laughs> um, Titanus, 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 uh, 
uh, <laughs> was writing in, in the second century BC. Again, if you want to know what he wrote, you gotta you gotta Google. This is quality or quantity over quality here. Okay, <laughs> we're not we're not giving away good information. We're just giving a lot of bad information away. So that'll make up for it. Oh, he can't hear me. Griffin smells. Haha. Who? Goss. <laughs> <laughs> Mechanis <Hey>. <laughs> Melissas <coughs> was a first century playwright of comedy of manners. Of a comedy of manners. What does that mean? So, well, <laughs> if I put the bottles down for a second <clears throat> and I clear my throat <clears throat> and I control C and I control V into Google, <clears throat> it's a play. Uh, it's a comedy genre. In English literature, the term comedy of manners describes a genre of realistic satirical comedy of the restoration period that questions and comments upon the manners and social conventions of a greatly sophisticated artificial society. Okay. So it's basically like highbrow humor kind of making fun of like, it's like original like political humor kind of stuff. This would be on the front page of Reddit for sure. (laughs) Next person, Seneca, Seneca. One of the Seneca. two. <coughs> I'm dying. Uh, first century dramatist, most famous for Roman adaptations of ancient Greek plays. Medea. Medea. The Medea movies. Uh, the the Quintilogy or whatever. Is that what it is? What is it when it's nine movies? The saga. The Medea saga. That's it. Griffin? Oh no, I think Griffin has died. Well, <laughs> while I sit and wait for Griffin to come back, let me tell you about uh, the latest episode of Seinfeld I just watched. So I just watched uh, the episode The Caddy, where Griff, uh, <laughs> not Griffin, but Kramer is <laughs> he? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. I don't know where he went. We might have to start the recording over. <coughs> it's okay. Technical difficulties. Anyway, Kramer is. Oh. You might want to unmute. <laughs> you might want to unmute. You might want to on Brie yeah, right. swag. You might yep. want to. <laughs> Was this? A... Are we gonna just keep that in? Do you, do you want to keep that in, or we could redo it and try to make it more comprehensible? What? <laughs> do, what do you want to do, bud? I'm keeping this all in. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <coughs> Clear the throat. Uh, anyway, <laughs> the Medea saga was written by uh, Seneca, the first century dramatist, most famous for Roman adaptations of ancient Greek plays such as Medea. The Medea he did saga. write Medea. Uh, wow. That's cutting edge. Cutting edge. Excellent. If you know how to read English and you can read the word Medea, then well, yeah, she wrote Medea. Yeah, exactly. Next one is Aeneas, contemporary of Plautus, who wrote both comedy and tragedy. Now that is okay. a winning combo. Like Shakespeare. We got a real Willie Shakespeare over here. <laughs> oh my goodness, my throat is as dry as the Mojave. Uh, <laughs> Lucius Acacius is how I'm going to say his name is a tragic poet and literary scholar so you got some Lucius like Acacius? high <laughs> did I say you could interrupt me while I'm talking <laughs> come on now <laughs> not there uh, n- he was a tragic poet and literary l- 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 scholar so if that tells you anything and then <laughs> <laughs> then um, that tells you anything. Um, last one, Pacu- Bac- Pacuvius, kind of like Vitruvius from the hit movie, The Lego Movie, played by Morgan Freeman, um, <laughs> was Aeneas's nephew and tragic playwright. Uh, 
Griffin, did I say you could mock my Lego movie fandom? You know I wrote for the wiki. Yeah, that's right. Sip. You're drinking your pumpkin spice latte like it doesn't have a lid on it and it doesn't have a straw inside of it. You're frustrating me, Griffin. You're frustrating me. I'm getting I, this. The more. OK, Mrs. Maine, I'm going to have to pause the project right here. This sombrero in the top of my camera here. It's not cultural appropriation. OK, I got it at Disney World in Me Disney, Mexico. OK, they wear these. I didn't go to real Mexico. <clears throat> Some fun facts for the boys. Uh, <laughs> that means this is man, you can't you can't listen from here. You gotta skip to 240 in the video <laughs> and just rewatch the video over again. Oh no, we've gone far past three minutes. <laughs> it's been like ten. <laughs> Since the actors were professional and did uh, did receive pay, someone had to pay to to sponsor the play <laughs> that's not really a fact that's just like a thing that happens in modern um, i mean that makes sense okay i mean how do plays get money currently how do the, how does the school get money you get sponsors right butts and seats <laughs> and butts in seats that is correct uh as a way to honor the gods some wealthy noble would pay for the play and then allow people to come and watch the play for free uh oh. <laughs> since every town had a forum like wait a minute uh, reddit wait a minute um wait a minute <laughs> so hold on if he would pay for the play and then allow people to oh i thought he was like paying for himself and then somehow he got in free i'm like no you didn't you paid for it <laughs> i would if i paid for a play i'd watch it every night no i wouldn't i'd watch it once and then i'd be like it was okay and then <laughs> and then that would be what it. if i was in um, it i'm sorry you know i'd pay every dime <laughs> to see that play <laughs> oh you're a good actor, Griffin. I want to see you in the next Tarantino film. Cool, Django I'm totally Re not going to be racist. Django, <laughs> Django Rechain. Or Pulp Fiction to even more fiction than Pulp. Even pulpier. 2% Pulp. <laughs> pulp free. Pulp free. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Maine. I have tuberculosis. Every now and then, hey, the camera comes hey, to me, one. and I'm by myself. All right, I'm sorry. I don't know what he's talking about. Every time the camera comes to me in the movie, I cough into a white handkerchief, and I look, and there's blood, and then I stuff it in my pocket. The classic trope. Um, anyway, <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> Since every town had a forum, which was used as an open-air market, uh, this is usually where the stage for the play was erected. Insert joke here. Um, the forum. Now, the word forum. Do you know what the word forum means? Uh, if, you're, <laughs> if you went on the internet, you would know a little bit about a thing called Reddit. So, um, enough said. <laughs> The stages were made of wood and had little or no scenery, ba scenery backdrop. That was, I broke up the sentence before it even ended because there's a little speck on my screen right where a period would be. So I preemptively stopped. I'm going to just, oh, no, that's stuck on there. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> under the empire, stone theaters are built as well with room for large audiences. Um, that's cool. Stone is nice. I mean, if it rains. Like cold gonna be a little slippery uh so good luck getting up those steps uh i know i fear walking up steps every single day because of my shaky knees um anyway that's all i'm gonna give for facts there's like 500 more but i think i've said enough and i don't think i want mrs main to watch a two hour long video the size of oh wait hold on there were a few female actresses would you oh did you look at the actress oh Oh, you just skipped ahead. The actors were always men until Empire times. Under the Empire, there were a few female actresses who performed on major stages in the stone theaters. Oh, that's so they cool. uh, on the slippery stages, on the slippery slopes of the stone theaters, you got women in there instead of men being women. But that was cool too. I don't judge. Me neither. All right. 
All right, so moving on to the middle one, I'm gonna oh, st we are. start from my side. Okay. Um, so you're gonna so read it backwards up. I'm gonna read it backwards up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> actually, reads it backwards up. I'd be impressed. Okay, <laughs> how you doing? Oh, next question. <laughs> oh, was that really loud? Oh. <laughs> well, it was worth the bit. All right. I don't know oh. where my stuff begins and your stuff ends. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, um, yours starts the, at by far. The last it's not the I last part. known. Nope, I did that. Oh. <laughs> well, why don't we just <laughs> say that I did the whole project? Uh, by far. Absolutely not. By far. Um, where would that be? <laughs> Technical difficulty. After 549. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> by far the most famous and successful charioteer raised during the reigns of Hadrian and Antonius P Pius in the second century AD, that's after death. Uh, <laughs> his name was Gaius Apuleius Di Di Diocles. And that is a um, little known fact about him is that is, that's where we got the, the, name, the name for Applebee's. Um, so anyway, and we you have his gravestone on which he claims that he raced for 24 years, mostly for the Red Faction, and he won almost 35% of his races. Placed second in a further 33%, this is an extremely impressive <laughs> record, and only failed to place in 32% of his races. There's a lot of percentages there. I don't know what they mean. I'm scared. I didn't. I don't know what this is, Griffin, because you didn't explain it. Why did we work backwards? Whose idea was this? Basically... He didn't lose very often when it came to chariot racing. He was top notch. Now, he claims that he raced for 24 years. Now, is this, do you think this is like, oh yeah, I've raced for 24 years? Or is it like, I raced for 24 years? Considering how long people lived back then in ancient Rome, I feel like he'd be like sitting on the side of the road with a honking cigar going, Hey, you know I used to race for 25 years? You know, like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, whatever. Teamwork makes the dream work, Griffin. I don't think there's teamwork in chariot racing. Uh, he was an immensely popular and immensely wealthy man at his death. Another charioteer, that's a fun word, mentioned in historical sources was a young man called Scorpius who seemed to have a great career ahead of him for the green faction when unfortunately he crashed into the fi finishing post and his career came to a swift end at the end of the first century AD. <laughs> he pulled a Randy Savage. Is it too late to say that? It's fine. Is it too early? Is it too early to say that? He just, he just straight up wallop into it. He he was a little drunk. He was a little tipsy. He had too much to drink. He gets pulled over, and he's like, "I'm fine, Ossifer." And then he drives off, hits a pole, and dies. And that's basically what happened. That's not how Randy Savage died. <laughs> Randy Savage had a heart attack and hit a pole. Then he already he had a tree. That's what he no. Did. He plowed through a highway. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah, he plowed through oncoming traffic on a highway and flew off an off ramp. Oh my god. Because he snorted so much coke, he literally just, like, his heart detonated. <laughs> his heart oh pulled god. a Call of Duty C4. Oh, wow. Here's a photo yeah. of, the, tr of the, the car. There was no car. <laughs> Not after that. <laughs> nope. It was the nice like a, it was metal. Like a, yeah, it was like a black Jeep Cherokee or whatever. I'm doing fight, officer. Yeah. I've been driving for three minutes. Three, three minutes, minutes of, of playtime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. 
So Scorpius, <laughs> he seems like a, a fun a fun lad. He's got a fun little name. This meeting has been upgraded by the host and now includes unlimited minutes. <laughs> Some fun fact <laughs> about chariot racing is unlike the heavy chariots used in most Hollywood depictions, including all the Ben-Hur films, racing chariots were very light and small. They needed to go as fast as possible and were probably made of wicker and leather. Driving one would have been like surfing a basket on wheels. <laughs> so <laughs> not a lot of control <laughs> if you think about it, if it's as light as a wicker basket. Um, I'm thinking like a hamper. <laughs> so yeah yeah it's about what i'm thinking too my so. thumb really hurts tell me tell me griffin we worked through it backwards we did it i don't know how we did it but we did it so why don't you tell me and give me an explanation as to what i just said because i don't even know some of the things that come out of my mouth sometimes all right yeah okay. yeah 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 Circus Maximus is an ancient chariot racing stadium and mass entertainment venue in the valley between the Aventine and Palatine mount, uh, hills, mountain hills. It was the first and largest stadium in ancient Rome and its later empire. It stands at 2,037 feet in length, 387 feet in width, and could accommodate over 150,000 people. It's a lot it is fully developed form. It became the model for circuses throughout the Roman Empire. The site is now a public park. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not anything special. Beneath the outer stand, next to the, the circuses, many multiple entrances, were uh, workshops and just like general stores. Okay. So it's basically like a, like a strip mall. When no games were being held, the circus at the time of Catulus um, was likely a dusty open space with shops and booths with a colorful, crowded, disreputable area. I don't know if you know. Frequented uh, by prostitutes, jugglers, fortune tellers, and low class performing artists. Griffin, you can't just say that on a school presentation. Come I just did. Now. Even at the height of its development as a chariot racing circus, <laughs> the circus remained the most suitable space in Rome. For religious processions on a grand scale, so it's a little bit of a temple slash church thing too. In the late third century, the emperor Probus, <laughs> Probus. <laughs> laid a <laughs> spectacular circus show in which beasts were hunted through a veritable forest of trees on a specifically built stage. The last known beast hunt at the Circus Maximus took place in 523, and the last known races there <clears throat> were held by Tortilla. In 549, by far the most famous and successful charioteer race during the reign. Uh, you said all that. No, maybe you didn't. Yeah, you did. The Colosseum. <laughs> the Colosseum. <laughs> wait, wait. The Circus Maximus. We have six. Sounds minutes. like a flea market. Yeah. Good way like, putting do it. you know the? Uh, yeah. I don't know what it's called. Oh my god! Yes, what the is big it chicken. called? The... <laughs> Did it look the... like I was gonna talk about a chicken? It is the largest ancient amphitheater. Oh, this is the Colosseum, by the way. It is the largest ancient amphitheater ever built, and is still the largest standing amphitheater in the world today, despite its age. Construction began under the Emperor Vespasian in 72 AD and was completed in 80 AD under Titus. But subsequent modifications were done under the rule of Domitian. Because of their assistance in the creation of this place, the Colosseum is also known as the Flavian Amphitheater. It the, was constructed sorry, from was the Flavian, Flavian Amphitheater. Yes. <clears throat> it was constructed from Tavertine limestone, a volcanic rock known as Puff, and a brick-faced concrete. <laughs> the Colosseum could hold an estimated 50,000 to 80,000 spectators at various points in its history, having an average audience of some 65,000. That's a lot of people. 
It is used for gladiatorial contests and public spectacles, including animal hunts, executions, reenactments of famous battles, and dramas based on Roman mythology, and briefly mock sea battles. Now, how would that work? Explain they would legit flood the Colosseum. <laughs> Really? Have high Are you rise, serious? like dead serious. Please. Yes, I'm actually serious. They would flood the thing and then have <laughs> high rise things. So you. Oh no! No! <laughs> no worse time. I was getting interested. Anyway, Mrs. Main, you ever watch Howdy Doody, <laughs> the Howdy Doody show? Now, now that that is a show. Let me tell you. No, I used to watch it uh, legitimately. I used to watch it when I was up. Oh. All right. <laughs> Tell me about this sea battles. The building ceased to be used for entertainment in the early medieval era. It was later reused for such purposes as housing, workshops, quarters for a religious order, a fortress, a quarry, and a Christian shrine. It is Christian. now labeled one of the Seven Wonders of the World ain't if you count Andre the Giant, or as we know him best, Andre the Andre. <laughs> Most gladiators who participated, though that sounds far too willing, because it, it wasn't really that willing. The gladiators who participated in these battle events were either slaves or conquered people from other wars, with only some of them being incarcerated criminals. The most famous gladiator of all time has to be Spartacus, who is probably more famous for inspiring a rebellion against his captors. Ooh. So here's the story of Andre the Andre. So <laughs> I was doing my notes, like a good boy, and Nick, being a terrible influence, changed it to Andre the Midget. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but the word midget causes me to chortle spontaneously. So I'm trying to hold it together. And I was really tired that day. Listen, I was up at like four in the morning because my knee hurt. So it was it was a rough day. So Andre the Midget happened. And I'm like, oh, no. So I'm trying to fix it, right? Because I got to be serious for this thing. Well, here's what happens. My brain hits factory reset. And it tried to write it all over again. So I wound up writing... Andre the Andre. And that became <laughs> so funny to me in your class. I broke down laughing so hard. I was crying. There was snot everywhere. I, I it, was there. He was there and he laughed at me. <laughs> it was dead quiet. He was like crying, laughing. <laughs> yeah. I, I looked like, like I was having a mental breakdown and literally nobody cared. Except I mean, for this man, because he kept laughing at me. Because of Andre the Andre. Man, this is a lot. I need I need an Altoid. How much time do we have left? We have less than two minutes. Any closing what do you mean remarks? We have less than two minutes. I have a timer. Why do you have a timer? I thought you said we have unlimited time. No, I never said that. You did. Any closing remarks? Uh, closing remarks. This is a fun little project. I hope we did a good job. We have our citations. We have our images. Um, yes. In terms of presenting it, I don't know how I feel personally about how I did. Uh, but I. This is it. This is not going to get off the ground. Get an a, and yeah, I think I should fail. Uh, the the course, of course. I will see you next year. It's happening.